Uh, welcome to Safe Travels. Uh, I was actually making some other videos, so I thought I would do this. Um, the let's talk about Kenya. Kenya is um, an awesome uh, country. Kenya, Kenya is really cool. It really is. Um, let, let me start out by saying uh, airport's pretty small. Um, you have to get uh, it's a uh, yellow fever. Uh, I think yellow fever uh, country or area. So you have to get your immunizations. If you're gonna travel to Kenya, make sure you get uh, all the shots. The local health clinic usually cheaper. Um, we get all the shots. It takes a little while. You get a card um, that you carry with you along with your passport. Always make sure you have copies of passports, driver's license, everything you might pause, photos of uh, airline tickets and reservations, whatever you might need. Um, always make a duplicate copy and keep those somewhere else. Uh, in Kenya, it's, it's an interesting country. Um, around Nairobi, um, it is the temperature, I think I was there in December, and the temperature... It was, it was beautiful. It was like 70-something degrees. And it seemed like there was always a cool breeze. Always. Um, it was just awesome. It really was. It was great. Um, it could rain. You know, I think it rained like every afternoon. Maybe. During the rainy season, maybe that's what it was. And it was like, for like half an hour. And it was good. Um, Kenny's not the most developed country in the world. Um, so, it's not really that developed as it is. The, um, uh, let's, uh, here, we'll go to Mombasa. Mombasa, uh, is, uh, primarily a, uh, Muslim center. Uh, so it's pretty Christian, uh, very Christian. It, it's, Mombasa is hot as can be. If you like it, and it's right by the ocean. So, if you like it, hot as can be, and humid as can be, Head on over there. Now, the travel time between Nairobi and Mombasa, I think should probably take two hours. Due to road conditions and the standard uh, construction situation, uh, I think it took six. In most African countries, most countries around the world, uh, there's this mentality, not a mentality, um, a situation where it's let's rush, 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 and then we're gonna wait, 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 <laughs> and then once we get done, oh, we're done. Oh, we gotta hurry, we gotta hurry, hurry, hurry to get this new next place. And then when you get there, you wait, 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 wait. Um, Nairobi has some very interesting things. There's a market, Central Nairobi. Uh, you can get all sorts of stuff. And you can travel on the roads, you get all sorts of stuff. Haggling, bartering is common. Uh, you do need to be very careful. Crime is... It's a poor country. Uh, I went through the, the ghetto in Nairobi. And I can tell you that, you know, you had to walk along the gutter. The gutter is this wide, and it's flowing down the middle of the street. Uh, the streets, you know, between the walls, you know, is this wide. About as wide as, you know. And so, you're walking along where people are shitting and pissing. Oops. People are urinating and defecating. <laughs> the walls are all metal. It's all metal, tin, shacks, shanties. Um, a standard room. You know, you fit five people in it. It's just, um, it's a room. It's a metal room. You know, ten people. Who knows? Um, it's it's ridiculous. Uh, wa water. Um, there's a centralized well. People might get water from. Um, the conditions are horrible. Uh, I was there. We were speaking with uh, I think it was a Catholic priest, maybe I don't remember. And he was getting a a card so somebody could go get medical help. And this guy, I don't think he was going to give it to him. Um, they couldn't. He was too far advanced. This guy had a tumor. He wore a scarf in the middle of. It was winter to them. This is this is funny. They're all wearing winter coats, all bundled up hats and everything. Um, because at that time, it's winter, and but it was like 70 degrees. <laughs> but it was winter to them. So anyway, this guy had a tumor. 
And it was like the size of a basketball. Well, maybe, yeah. You know, a soccer ball, volleyball, I don't know, something like that. It was connected to the spine. Um, this guy's dead, I'm sure. He's probably dead. He, I, he probably died before we left in the plane um, a couple weeks later. Uh, surgery was never going to happen. Uh, they couldn't cut it out because of the spinal cord. Um, and I think they weren't going to give him the chemo. Uh, it was just too far advanced. And it was a matter of not wasting it on someone who's going to die. Um, conditions are a little brutal. Um, it's the way it is. Uh, it's poverty. It's poor. Um, the hotel that was supposed to be the one of the best hotels there, the resort, we spent a night. Spent money. And that would count as probably three stars here in the U.S. And it would be like five stars there, that kind of thing. Um, you can go on the tourist areas. You can go to the reserves. Uh, Nakuru is a lake. There's flamingos. But it's drying up. I, from what I heard, it was, I mean, very, very dry. I'm not sure it's still there. I mean, I know there's some lake in Africa. It's just been drying up like crazy. But Lake Nakuru uh, is supposed to be on the list. Uh, other than that, you can see all sorts of wildlife. There's a zoo. I don't remember what reserve it is. Uh, but you can ask someone. I'm sure it's there. We got in, um, and I don't know if someone knew someone or I mean, we were with someone who spoke Swahili. Um, it was actually it was interesting. We were with someone who spoke Swahili in English. Uh, and then our driver spoke Swahili in French. So we had this whole roundabout conversation kind of thing going, and it was, it was interesting. But anyway, we, we were at an animal reserve, I think it is, or a zoo. And we were allowed to go in, and there was a cheetah or a leopard. I think it was a cheetah. Um, and we were able to pet it. And it was a big, I mean, I, I rubbed its stomach, and it started purring. It was purring. And it sounds like a cat, exactly like a cat, if a cat, you know, but it would be compared to like, if a cat was uh, a lawnmower purring, then this thing was like a tractor. <laughs> I mean, you could just feel it, you know, it was, uh, it, was in, it was interesting, you know, I mean, a cat that big. Um, so there's that, there's the dancers, don't remember their names. It's a troupe. There's a dance company. Uh, there's a place you can go, and the the dancers are there. They come out. They do a whole thing. I think uh, my wife at the time uh, was actually, I think she got out and danced with them. Maybe. I don't remember. Um, but it was interesting. It was cool. Um, it was. So you got to do that. That's somewhere around Nairobi, I think. Um, there is... A giraffe farm. The giraffe farm was um, interesting. They'll do the silly thing where the giraffe comes up and licks you, and it's slobbering. You can buy the food, and it's just, I mean, it is pretty nasty. <laughs> but it's kind of cool to see a giraffe up close. Um, as you're going through, monkeys do run all over the roads. Um, warthogs, uh, you have to be careful. The there's a restaurant, There's, I think there's a few of them around the world, uh, Carnivore. Well, they'll bring over meat on a big, like, actually, like, uh, it's a big, it's a skewer, spit thing. They barbecue it, they bring it over, they shave the meat off, you have a little thing that you don't want anymore, you put it down, you want more. And they'll bring over goat, camel, which I don't recommend, crocodile, um, buffalo, you know, all sorts of stuff. Chicken, obviously. Uh, all that stuff. They'll bring over whatever. All sorts of stuff. Um, ostrich. You know. Um, what else? And so, so the carnivore is kind of a neat thing. There are... Um, let's see. What else is there? Kenya. Kenya had a lot of refugees from... From Sudan, Darfur, um, Kenya was Kenya had a lot of people coming in from uh, Zimbabwe, I believe, who were looking for work. Some of the neighboring countries. There was a woman we we met with. 
we met. Um, she was go leaving the war. She was a refugee. She walked through the desert, and um, her baby was taken from her. And you know, she I mean, she lost it. And I I I, I empathize with her. Um, but that's refugees are pretty common. Um, and here's one of the things people really should know. The refugees get paid, I think they get paid dirt to work. So your authentic African drum was probably made by a refugee from war, a war refugee. And um, they probably didn't make nothing. I saw some of the conditions. Uh, the one person who was a driver and uh, Rodrigue. Rodrigue was a driver. I don't know if he still is. He had some sisters in another country. Um, nice guy. Nice guy. Well educated. I think he actually had a degree in engineering. Um, he was a driver. It's the only job he could get. And he was lucky to have it. He was thankful to have it. And he, um, I saw his where he lived. Um, it was a shared bathroom. It's much like some of the uh, day laborers in uh, the, the well-paid day laborers in Kuwait or other countries, Middle Eastern countries, um, African countries. It's one room. It's all you get. Um, if you, I mean, that's what you get. A shared bathroom. All there's no kitchens. There's none of that. Um, these you have a hot plate. Obviously, you get more and more people in them until you could probably fit if you had to. 10, um, 5, I believe is probably more normal. 3 is definitely normal around the world. Um, 1 is, is decent. Um, so, and, and most people don't ever see that. Now, when you go, I can tell you, here, here's, and I don't mean, I'm not a racist. I'm not, um, here's one of the things that I found interesting about myself. Okay. You're going into this, this this driver. Oh, really? I love the guy. I don't love the guy. Yeah, I like the guy, Rodriguez. Great guy. I, if I could, I'd help him. I think we actually sent him money. I think I sent him money. Um, he um, he says, no, 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 no. Don't spend three hundred on this African drum at the store, at the market. No, 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 no. I'll take you to the spot. Takes you to the spot. Now the spot, for whatever reason, we went at night, um, and I mean the road. You're driving along, and you're you know your car's doing this, you know, over the bumps, and it's like you know, and it was just crazy. Um, we go to the refugee spot. Uh, they gotta open the gate. We go in. He goes talking. Oh, come in now. We go in. We see some drums, and I mean, man, nice stuff. Nice stuff. Stuff. The high end stuff you see in these stores. And we got it for like 30 bucks or something like that. And, um, you know, you think about it, and you're like, okay, this guy got us a great deal. And, uh, but I can tell you, when we were driving through there, you're driving five miles an hour, three miles an hour, there are no lights. Um, and there was a mass of people coming our way. And there was all the refugees leaving. And they were going to wherever it is they live. And these people take a bus for an hour one way. And the bus is packed. Packed. So they take it, you know. And, and that, everybody, back then, it seemed like everybody was wearing clothes. Maybe from like the 70s that were here. The early 80s. It was um, suits. Everywhere were suits. There was, we were in this, uh, I'll help me finish this story. The, uh, so... So just an idea about the whole refugee thing. When all these people are coming at you, and you're the only white person, uh, you know, so when people, when, when there's, here in America, and we talk about racism and discrimination and that feeling you get when you're the only black person in the whole room, okay, I, I understand it. I've been in a situation where I was the only white person, and somehow, I think it does play with your mind. Um... Because you want to believe people are people, and I understand that, but it's it's just such a you stand out, you you just stand out so much that you know there's this this thought. Now I can tell you the market, 
the one market, the one central market, it's on a street, takes up a couple streets. It's one of those places people recommend you go. Um, if pe there, you, you can get robbed there very easily. You can get taken to a side street and mugged. Um, when you're driving in your car, you take the main roads during the day. You do not take the main roads at night. The reason you don't take them at night is because the main roads is where it is easiest to set up roadblocks and to carjack you. Okay? So don't take the main roads at night. So and don't have someone there who if you if you're going anywhere around the world and you don't know what you're getting into, have someone else who does. Um otherwise you're gonna be in big trouble. And that's just a fact. Um, or go to your resort and don't ever leave. That's how it works. Um, what else? Uh, Kenya. There, there are some awesome places throughout Kenya. Uh, there's the the great. Uh, I I did not see the the migration over the Serengeti. Um, it was not the right time, but the planes are just incredible. There is the one group of people, I can't remember the name, they wear the red, traditionally red, and they, they jump. And then part of the what really is um, status symbol is how high you can jump. Um, if you're going down the road and you hit a sheep or a pig or a something, an ox, but you don't want to do it with your car, but <laughs> uh, you can get in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Um, the the Great Rift Valley is that what it is? I, I, I to be honest with you, I, should, I maybe I should start scripting these. I think uh, this canyon was one of the most beautiful things I've seen. The Grand Canyon, I have. It's awesome. This area in Kenya, you can stand up and and you can see, and it is amazing. Uh, we went through a toll road, and it looked like. And you're coming up to this. It looks like in the movies when you see the scenes where there was like a nuclear war or, you know, every turn into zombies and it's just desolate and it looks like no one's done anything for like a year. You know, like it's only been like a year or maybe, you know, six months. So it's not like everything's shattered and destroyed, but it's, it looks like it's on its way there. That was this toll booth we went through, and it looks like some you could get into some shady stuff, um, hairy stuff. The uh, that Kenya really, I think Kenya's awesome. I do. I think you need to be smart. I think you need to be careful. I think you need to plan it correctly. And I think you need to to call the embassy to let the Department of State know you're going to be there to plan things properly, get reviews, talk to people, and think about what it is you want to do and what you want to see and how you want these things to go. The truth is, you you, you want to go see lions. Um, you might get lucky. You could stay at a resort, an expensive resort, and go out every single day and every single night, and maybe they might, you know, try and bait them. The, uh, what else is there? Uh... Kenya. Kenya's pretty cool. It really is. If you get the chance, you know, you're not far from Kilimanjaro. Kind of cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot of places. The villages. Okay, you start going further and further out. Um, Embu. A bunch of places. Um, you'll see there's small little towns. And the small little towns like a small little town here. You, got, yeah, you get lucky, you get a post office, you get the grocery store. A uh, hardware store, a couple of stores. So main road off, that's it. And then as you go out, off the main road, you get the dirt roads. You get down the dirt road, there is a uh, a, a farm. Um, what I realized, too, is, is you hear, I think Hillary Clinton brought it up years ago. Was, uh, it takes, a, you know, and it's an old African thing. It takes a whole tribe. It takes a village to raise a child. That's what it was. Now, what's now seen to me is 
village really I think ends up being a huge huge extended family okay I really think that's what that means um, and it does take a whole family to raise a child the uh, the what they do is they take toilets in your fancier places, fancier places, standard places. They'll put the toilet in the ground instead of having an outhouse. There's still an outhouse, and instead of the toilet sitting up on the ground, up top, and having to sit on it, the toilet is placed in the ground, and you squat still. The farming, and you can go through some mud. You get on some of these roads. Good luck. If you don't have the right vehicle. You could be out there for a while, depends on the rain, depends on a whole lot of stuff. Um, some of these people are just awesome. Some of the most friendly people I've ever met, same here in the United States, same in tons of other places. Some people are not. I can tell you in the one place we went, uh, the person was growing some crops, and they were also growing cat, K-A-T. K-A-T, I believe, is like cocaine, the coca leaf. Um, it's sold in some bars and some spots. Um, it's illegal, I think, to import in the United States and England. I don't know about some other places. That stuff is true. It is used locally. We stopped at one of the roadside bars. And I can tell you, um, if it was me, I'd have a couple guns. Okay? If I was going to go out on a Friday night in some of these spots, I'd have two guns and two knives. Okay, that's a we'll little rank it that way. It's a two gun, two knife town. <laughs> All right. Um, and as you go through um, the, uh, um, but sometimes the, the religion is big and they get out there. Reality is a lot of people dying from AIDS. A lot of people dying from AIDS. A lot of kids are starving. A lot of people are getting malaria. Um, they need the nets. They need the medicines. They need condoms. Um, you know, we got to stop that whole abstinence nonsense. Um, I'm sorry, actually, I shouldn't even get into that. I apologize. That's really not my place to say. All I'm doing is giving you the general picture so you can have a safe and happy, fun time in Kenya. All right, your own personal political views are your own. So don't comment. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> All right, it's save that for another discussion board. Um, there is. There's a lot of old people, a lot of really young people, because all the middle people are dying due to AIDS. So these people have kids. They die, and the only people left to raise them is the grandparents. The, some of the construction, if they're lucky, the construction will be blocked, like. A lot of other countries otherwise the old construction method the mud hut it ha it's what people live in um, batch roof seen it been in it uh, the one was two rooms and I think there's like five people living in it um, it's interesting um, so Kenya is an awesome place you will see stuff there and experience stuff there you never would anywhere else. It is probably one of the safest African countries. Uh, it's probably one of the most developed. Well, I'll leave South Africa off of off the whole discussion here. For the most part, Kenya is pretty cool. Okay? So, you can hit Kenya. Uh, be safe. Have safe travels. <laughs> uh, enjoy yourself. Be smart. And, and you really will enjoy it. Um, I think that pretty much covers Kenya. And good luck to you. Safe travels. Thank you.